In this video, we're going to talk about how to modify the historian storage rates at runtime. I've had a lot of questions over the years about how do I increase the resolution of the data that's being stored at the historian based on some event or from an operator action on a screen. You know, if something happens in the process, whether it's an alarm condition or a startup condition, maybe I want to capture that data at a different resolution so I can do some deeper analysis of that data. So in this video, we're going to drill into how to make that happen with System Platform and Wonderware Historian. So as you can see on the screen, I have an InTouch OMI application running, and I have six tanks on this application. And you can see I'm using the little thumbnail of a trend on the bottom of the tanks, showing the resolution of the data that's going into the Wonderware Historian. So if I go look at my Historian Client Trend Tool, you can see the resolution of the data. I'm pulling the data from directly from the Wonderware Historian. If I want to go into my Query Tool and I do a refresh, you can see here I'm getting data about every five seconds on the nose here. So the poll rate right now in the slow poll mode is set for five seconds. So I'm not going to change the poll rate for these first three tanks to say a normal mode. And a normal mode is one second resolution. So right now we're actually pulling this simulation I.O. server that I have here. Could very well be an Allen Bradley driver or some other type of PLC. But you can start seeing on the thumbnail of the trend the resolution that I'm collecting the data is much quicker. I'm seeing a lot more data on the thumbnail of the trend that I did for the second set of tanks I have here. So if I go look at my historian client trend, you'll be able to see a lot more resolution. You see the trend is updating a lot quicker and more often than it was previously when I was doing a five second poll rate. If I go look at my query tool and I do a refresh on that, you'll be able to see that the data truly is coming in every second. So you can see here 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, every second the data is coming in. So I'm storing the data at a faster rate inside the Wonderware Historian for deeper analysis. So now I'm going to switch these first set of tanks into what we call a fast mode. So the fast mode is actually going to store the data. It's going to go out and pull the data from the simulation I.O. server every 100 milliseconds. Therefore, I'm using delta storage in the Historian is actually going to store the data inside the Historian at that rate. So if we go now and look at the trending tool, you can see when I bumped up that storage rate, there's a lot more data, a lot more resolution than I can see on my Historian client, which in turn is pulling the data from the Wonderware Historian. So these points are actually being logged to the Wonderware Historian at that rate. So now I'm looking at my Historian client query tool, and now you can see that resolution is actually being stored into the database. So if I look here, at the 39th second, you can see there's about 10 samples. So if you look here, about every 100 milliseconds, I have a point that's being logged to the Wonderware Historian. So basically what I'm doing is I'm changing the rate that we're pulling the data from the I.O. server or from my simulation server. And in turn, because the data is moving very quickly, I'm storing those points into the Wonderware Historian at that rate. So let's go take a look behind the scenes and see how we accomplish this with the Wonderware software. So we're using System Platform, in this case 2017 Application Server, and I have these six tanks deployed in Application Server connected to an I.O. simulator. And these are associated with two different areas, tank area number one, tank area number two. So if I look at one of those tank area objects, I have an attribute defined called the scan rate. And the scan rate is what I write to from that drop-down list inside the uh, HMI application. So I change basically that scan rate. And in turn, I'm going to fire off a script on one of my tank objects or the tank objects. So I have a data change script that's looking at something called my area. It's a keyword to point to the area that I'm associated with. So in tank one, it's going to look at area number one. Tank number four is going to look at area number two. So that's how I can segregate my uh, tanks by areas and I can change the entire area with one drop down. So the script basically is changing uh, a pointer to the device group. The device group has is set up for different time rates and I'll show you that in a minute. But basically I'm changing the input source of this pressure and I'm appending the actual scan rate whether it's fast, normal, or slow pull mode and in turn it's going to go out and pull the data from the I.O. server or the simulation server at that rate. 
So if I look at the configuration of my OI simulation server, and this could very well be a Allen Bradley CIP driver or a Modbus driver, they all have this same functionality, but I can set up different device group update intervals, right? So I have one defined for fast, normal, and slow, and I have that update interval defined here. So basically what the script is doing, the script is pointing to either the random fast, the random normal, the random slow rate, it's going out to the uh, simulation server and getting that data at that rate. And then in turn, because I'm getting the data much quicker from the I.O. server and the data is moving very quickly, the historian will see that data change and will store the data inside the historian at that rate. So I'm back in my HMI application. You can see those first three tanks are set up for fast scan rate. You can see the trend thumbnail. That data is being trended very quickly. And the last three tanks are set up for a slow pull mode. So if I want to change one of those tanks and associate that with a different area, it's very easy inside of application server because I use that keyword my area inside a system platform. So I'm going to undeploy uh, tank number four here. And I'm going to drop that into the different area. It's going to take on the personality of tank area number one here. So I move that to that area and I deploy that. So now it's going to get the keyword where it's going to pull the data from that specific area and now it's going to go into whatever mode I have for that specific area so so now you can see just by dragging that guy into the different area tank number four here is starting to pull that data much quicker because it's associated with the fast pull rate for that first tank area so you can see how easy it was just to move that one tank into a different area, now it's going to take on the personality of that area number one and associate it with the, the fast scan rate at this time. There's one other setting that I need to point out how to make all this work is inside the engine, there's a scan time. So basically I have an engine, this facilities engine, and it's scanning all these objects. And that engine scan period is set up for 500 milliseconds. So if I want to get data from the I.O. servers faster than 500 milliseconds, I would not be able to do that unless I have this other setting set up, this buffered data setting. So this is only scanning 500 milliseconds, but if I want to pull the PLC or pull the I.O. server faster, I need to turn on this one setting here, this setting called buffered data. So if I go look at the I.O. configuration of my pressure, at my template level, I have this buffered data check. So what that's going to do is, you know, even though the engine only scans at 500 milliseconds and I'm pulling the data from the PLC or the simulation every 100 milliseconds, it's going to buffer up those variables or those readings for the next engine scan to import that data and in turn process and push that data to the one to where historian. So it's important to check the buffered data here when you're starting to get down to this fast data collection rates. Well, thank you for watching today. If you have any questions about what you have seen in this video, please contact me at the email address on the screen. Thanks again.